Um, we will now start our presentation with a little piece about the forestry programs that the University of Göttingen is providing. And uh, these, I think, would be some wonderful opportunities for you to, if you haven't had enough after these 16 days, to return to Germany and Göttingen especially for that. So a warm welcome, please, for Jutta Holstam of the Forest Faculty. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, good morning here and a happy welcome to the University of Göttingen. I think you arrived yesterday and maybe you had already a little sightseeing tour to Göttingen, I don't know. Have you been to? Okay, m more, more, more the pubs or, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, today, yeah, yeah. Okay, my name is Jutta Holstam and I'm working as an academic advisor at our master programs in first three yeah maybe you will come back one day and we'll do a master here in Göttingen okay maybe some words to our faculty of first science I don't know have you been there are they going to the faculty okay yeah okay it's a little bit far away yeah maybe 10 minutes by bike on the north located on the north campus this is our natural science campus with also chemistry physics department and some other scientific institutions. Um, maybe to mention that the Faculty of Forest Sciences are one of the largest and it's the only autonomous first faculty in Germany. So this is maybe important, maybe not. I mean, you can study also in other universities first sciences, but here is, you know, an autonomous first faculty. We have about 1,300 students which are studying in different study programs. So we offer bachelor programs, master programs, and PhD programs, all related to forest science. Um, in, we have 22 research departments, each with a specific um, focus on a special um, yeah, forestry research area. So we yeah, do a lot of research also in all aspects of forestry. And maybe also important to know, um, we have an own library only for forestry related books and publications. And this is one of the largest in the German speaking countries. I mean, this not only means that we only have German um, books, but um, also all the international publication and so on. But this is a very large um, library and I think you will find almost everything you are searching for. So these are, in short, um, yeah, the faculty. So let's come to the master programs in Forest 3 we are offering. So um, it, we offer three programs at the moment. One is in German, Forstwissenschaften and Waldökologie. I will not go into detail because I suppose that you are interested um, in the international programs. So then we have the Forest and Ecosystem Sciences program, FES and also the um, Sufonaima um, program, Sustainable Forest and Nature Management. Yeah, let's come to the um, Forest and Ecosystem Sciences Master. Um, you can choose from three, uh, from three um, different study tracks. So if you start the, or if you apply for this program, you just um, yeah, choose one of the um, study tracks. So one is ecosystem analysis and modeling. Um, this will give you advanced quantitative skills in statistics, programming, simulation modeling, agent-based modeling, and ecological theory building. So this is a focus on yeah, programming, modeling, and analysis. And the second one is ecosystem sciences. This may be interesting for you if you want to become, yeah, a really forest researcher and scientist. You study terrestrial ecosystems from the molecule to landscape level, and you will get a lot of field and lab methods. Yeah. And this is the focus more yeah, on the um, research methods. And this um, third one is Tropic and International Forestry. This is our TIFF program. Maybe you have heard about it. It's a very old and famous program. 
It's about um, yeah, civic, cultural, and um, ecological sound management of yeah, forest ecosystems in different um, zones of the world. Um, very outstanding is an interdisciplinary students project abroad. So um, every year the students, or once in this two years program, the students go abroad for four weeks. Um, this year, for example, they go to Nepal. Last year, they went to Indonesia. And they work on a special um, yeah, forest management plan all together. And it's always a nice experience for the students. Um, if you come from a de developing country and maybe you have also work experience, then the DAD scholarships are av available for you. This is also... Uh, good opportunity because you get a full-time scholarship and also travel costs and so on. So maybe if you have gained some work experience after your bachelor degree, you are yeah, welcome to apply for such a scholarship. Okay, then the second um, master program in the international field is Sustainable Forest and Nature Management, Sufunama. This is supported um, by the European Union. Maybe you have heard about the Erasmus Mundus program. We get financial support from the European Union. And this year, or we will start it again. It's um, in the fourth cycle again. So we have applied every five years for the um, financial um, funding. Um, and you can um, apply in November this year and it will start again in autumn next year. This um, program is run by, uh, or this is a double degree program, and it's run by uh, four universities or partner universities. So Copenhagen, Bangor University in the UK, our um, university, then the Swedish um, Arnab University, and the University of Padua. It's from the organization. This is in the fourth edition like this. So every edition, it's a little bit other organization than before. But this um, time you will start in Copenhagen for one year, then you can choose different tracks of studies. And in the second year, you can change one of the other partner universities. And if you choose Göttingen, then you choose for um, the track of forest and nature management in the changing climate. One semester, you will have um, modules about this. And in the last um, semester of this program, you will write your thesis about a specific topic. That's it about Sufonama. Maybe some words about Göttingen. Maybe you know where you are now. You are <laughs> quite in the middle of Germany. Göttingen is a typical German university town. You will find a lot of young people. That is not very normal in Germany. If you go to other cities, there are more older people. But here in Göttingen, yeah, this is quite um, a young city. Uh, we, are, we have um, about 13 faculties at the university. So you have a wide range of um, subjects you could study. We have also a lot of um, scientific um, yeah, institutions like the uh, Max Planck Institute, uh, Institute yeah, Max Planck Institute, and so on. So this is also a city of science. And as you maybe already noticed, it's also a quite small city, so you can go a lot by bike. And this also holds here yeah, for the North Campus. You are there within um, 10 minutes. And yeah. So at the end, I would like to play um, a little video about our FES um, program. And if you have other questions, then you can ask after the film, maybe if you have some time. Otherwise, you can also contact uh, my colleague Christian Beuter. He works also as a study advisor for international students at the faculty. And yeah, and I also have some leaflets here. So maybe you take it with you and. Okay, so then. Oh.
Okay, any questions left that you would like to ask? Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, F, um, for FES, the application deadline is in March, so in March next year. If you want to apply for a DAD scholarship, then you have to apply always to the end of October, the year before. And Sufonama, I already mentioned, it should be um, in November this year, so starting November, this application deadline. So, And if you have questions, just take some of the leaflets and just contact us. Yeah? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Frau Hulstam, for giving this presentation. Um, the leaflets will be placed on the way outside, um, maybe that's possible. And we will now continue with the presentation on the German forestry situation from a wood perspective from Frau Dr. Susanne Bollmus, um, who is a lecturer and uh, academic uh, worker of the University of Göttingen in the wood technology faculty field. So warm welcome, please. Nein, nicht PDF. Bitte PowerPoint. Ach, ich dachte, das ist jetzt. Entschuldigung. Das habe ich vorhin nicht gesehen. We will have it in a minute, sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, I would like to welcome you again. My name is Susanne Bolmus. Um, it's written here. I, um, after my school, I did an apprenticeship in woodworking and then I went to Hamburg and I studied wood science. So my forest knowledge is limited, I would say. So that also means that my presentation today is really the view of a wood scientist. So we are using wood and of course that is in um, some cases a little bit different compared to a forest view for point of view. So I was asked for to give a presentation more or less in uh, this topic, the use of timber in Germany. And now I have a short look to Fabian. I would say if I haven't explained something clear and you have um, questions, would be okay to uh, do it right away. If you have more comments or discussion, we will do that later. Is that right? Okay. So we will postpone the discussion until after the second presentation. But if you have any other questions concerning my topic here or the content, um, just feel free. And then I will interrupt the presentation for a minute. Okay, no, my problem. Yeah, okay. Um, in general, the use of timber depends on uh, many factors and I will address today um, a few parameters, so the ownership, uh, use restrictions of the area or the um, forest stands, the tree species, so which one are available, of course, the stock and the increment. And that all together is a mixture and that, um, yeah, influences the use of timber in a country. So the current situation is more or less like this here, what you see in this um, uh, picture. Um, so the present generation of the forest, we have a little bit more than half of um, softwoods and about 44% deciduous trees or hardwoods. But um, the next generation of the forest will look totally different in Germany. Um, we will probably get 
around about more than 7% of the deciduous trees. And um, so, of course, uh, the softwoods or the conifers um, amount will decrease. And uh, from a wood, you, from the you, from the wood utilization point of view, that is a huge challenge. That we have this transformation, I would call it tr transformation, that is um, a political, or it was a political decision. Um, around about 20 to 30 years ago, we decided that uh, we want to go more back to what we call nature forestry. That means that we will have the trees within our forest, which would be here without human beings. And in the area here around Göttingen, that means that we have beach, beach, and beach, basically. Um, but um, the trees which were planted um, in the period after the Second World War were in many cases spruce. So spruce wouldn't be a native wood species in uh, most of the areas in Lower Saxony. So then the politician or the political decision was that we want to go back to nature. And that is probably what we will get within a few decades. Now I will uh, present a few um, numbers related to the German forests. And I take the numbers from the um, third national forest inventory. Um, unfortunately, we are close to the fourth for the next one. So in some cases, the uh, um, numbers are a little bit old, but I like to use them because that's the only avail uh, really reliable statistic which is available. So the uh, National Forest Inventory um, provides sample-based data on status and develop on the German forest. And we can be really happy to have this inventory because we are in the lucky position to have a pretty good data related to our forests. Um, every 10 years, um, people run with a lot of measurement tools through the forest and uh, they take many more parameters besides just the trees on permanent plots. And because they are measuring permanent plots, that means that we can um, see what's happened exactly with the same area every 10 years again. And that gives us a really good database. And um, we do a lot of statistics with that, so we can uh, calculate the forest area, tree species, diversity, the age, structure of the forest, growing stock, and timber harvesting. And um, that is usually published uh, in uh, many publications. And uh, one of the main document is the one what I use, which is called um, third forest inventory data. So we took the, or we, um, performed the first national forest inventory in the 80s. And that was, of course, just Western Germany because the reunion wasn't um, uh, performed, so to say. Then we had the second one in the beginning of the uh, 2000 years, then 2011 and 12, the third one. And um, the fourth, so the data are all already collected, but the, um, um, the statistics, statistics are not yet available. And that makes my, my presentation a little bit more complicated because, especially because of the really challenging years, 2018 to 2021, um, we know that the data are not really correct anymore, but it gives us a hint at least. And um, yeah, unfortunately, I do not have better data, so I have to use them. Um, the total area of Germany is around about 36 million hectares and one third of our um, area of, of our total area is forest land. And uh, this red angle here is supposed to um, symbolize the uh, whole area, but of course not the whole area is interested when it comes to the point of uh, um, wood utilization. So we have a forest land of around about 11.4 million hectares and we divide the forest land in inaccessible area and accessible area or accessible forest land. Um, so this accessible forest land will be divided in unstocked forest land and timberland. 
and the timberland will be divided in temporarily unstocked area and this stock timberland is the relevant area um, for timber use. Because uh, again, we are talking about the use, we are not talking really about biodiversity or um, wildlife management, management or something like that, then you have to consider the whole area from a wood perspective, from a wood utiliz utilization perspective, we are um, talking about the stocked timberland, which is around about 11 million hectares. Um, when we think about what we have and what we can use, um, of course, we have to think uh, or we have to talk about also about use restrictions. That is also a really political topic. Um, in general, more than 90% um, of the area does not show any use restrictions. So in total, it is um, around about 450,000 hectare on which timber use is not permitted or it's actually not, yeah, it's not the wish of the owner basically um, not to, or to use the material there. The causes of use restrictions can be really different and I do not want to go really in detail here. The one, um, the one data I would like to explain a little bit more is the um, orange one here, 36% roundabout from this amount of uh, area here. Um, we have here the decision that the owner uh, decide that he wants to protect his area. So the use of wood, the use of stem to harvest something is actually not the wish of the owner. And that is in some cases depends from the country where you come from always a little bit, um, sounds maybe a little bit weird, but there are some owners, they, it's their own decision because it's their own land to say, I do not want to uh, touch the forest in terms of harvesting. Maybe they're doing something um, close to the trails and roads uh, for safety reason, but not really to use the forest as, um, yeah, to earn some money. So a lot of restrictions and even, or, a lot, of, a lot of possibly restrictions like nature protection or terrain condition, but also we have also the point that we have, um, yeah, the wish of the owner's decision. And um, I guess you have heard it before because you are a little bit longer in Germany, but um, we have the situation in Germany that um, almost half of the German forest is owned by um, private person or private forest. So um, that's a lot, and that influences a lot the way how, how the owners, um, or depends on what the owner's wish is, do they want to earn money with it? Maybe they have to sell some wood, um, but if not, we have many, many um, forest, private forest owners, they have really, a really, really small area, and they are not really interested in, in managing this area, and um, also not uh, really interested in, um, using the material, which of course influences what do we have, what do we get, and you will hear a presentation from Egar after my presentation, and um, that also influences, of course, sawmill owners and what do they get. So a few words through the area of the different tree species, again, around about 43% uh, deciduous trees, and then a little bit more than half um, conifers trees. Uh, the main hardwood wood species is beech with 15%. Then we have something what is called ODS, so other deciduous trees with short life expectancy, like birch, elder, popular, willow. That's just a mixture because we have just really small amounts of these wood species in the whole area. Then we have oak with around about 10%, and then something what we call ODL, other deciduous trees with long life expectancy, like maple, ash, chestnut, black locusts. But um, yeah, you see two main hardwood species, beech and oak, and with the whole percentage, that's not a lot. Um, compared to spruce, again, we know already that the spruce number is not right anymore after the last five years, but that was at least the last official data. So spruce and pine makes 
around about half of the German forest. Then we have a really small uh, area in large and Douglas fir. So Douglas fir is mainly introduced after the Second World War, really small amount of percentage and um, silver fir. Um, so now we see how the forest area changed. I said again, that was a politi political decision between the second and the third forest inventory. And um, we see that the um, percentage of deciduous trees raised up by around about 7%. And that was mainly because um, the area of beach raised up and that has a strong influence on the wood utilization. And I will come to that point later. And on the other side, yeah, the conifers or the area of the conifers dropped, especially by spruce. And um, the only area which increased um, slightly were Douglas fir and fir. But if you remember how much that was, that is actually not really important. Um, the political decision always said that we do not want to have pure uh, conifers forest. And um, of course, especially from a biodiversity point of view, um, that is a really um, good well, it was a really good decision, and that happens exactly what was um, actually, what was a wish that we have um, more mixed trees or stands and um, less pure uh, less pure stands. Of it doesn't matter which wood species. Pure stands is always, from a biodiversity point of view, not really a smart idea. So what do we have in stock? Uh, the stock doesn't represent really exactly the same number like the area, but because you know the trees looks like differently, you have a not different um, size of the tree and also the different numbers per hectare. And But here you can see also that most of the stock, and I, I draw this red line in this um, cake here, that we have here on this side um, all conifers and here um, all deciduous trees. So we have much more in stock um, based on conifers than on deciduous trees. And that, of course, also influences the use of, um, of timber. So what is available? So, um, yeah, the stock uh, we, we see between the second and the third forest inventory um, that with the exception of spruce, the stocks of individual tree species are increasing. Mainly, I mean, the biggest or the highest number shows Douglas fir, 47%, uh, but again, in total, the area was just 2%. So to increase a really small amount of area um, by 50% is much easier compared to um, areas when they are much bigger. And this um, this figure tells us again that we are using spruce, not just a lot, we are using spruce too much. We did that before the bark beetle pest and the drought and so on. And um, when I see as from a wood user's perspective, this picture, I see um, that we will get a huge challenge in the future concerning what material, which material is available. So the increment, of course, um, tells us something about how fast trees growing. So the unit is cubic, uh, cubic meter by, uh, per hectare and year. And all the deciduous trees, um, or the increment of all deciduous trees is much lower compared to the um, conifers. Outstanding here is Douglas fir, and that is even higher than the numbers of spruce. And that was the reason why Douglas fir was introduced to the German forest um, after the Second World War. It's producing biomass really, really fast. And that is actually what, uh, what the reason was. But if you see that we have, um, yeah, that, that of course the deciduous trees grow so much slower than the conifers. That tells us also something about the uh, situation within the next um, few years and decades because that of course that influence what we get. So now I would like to bring the increment and the use a little bit together. Um, two 
pictures or um, figures right now and I try to explain you that step by step, then it shouldn't be too complicated or at least I try to keep it as simple as possible. This tree um, supposed to be, in the beginning we have the increment with in total in Germany around about 121 million um, cubic meter per year. And um, that is what we get from the German forest. Then, of course, something um, will lead to an increase in the growing stock, around about 15.3 um, million cubic per year. Then we have some dead wood remains in the forest. And then we have also some harvests, losses and bark. And then we have a theoretical use from the German forest with a number of 75 um, million cubics. And I use this number now to explain you in uh, which sectors we are using the material. So this number here, um, sum it up to 76 million, is a 76 million um, utilized wood which comes from the German forest. And now I would like to explain in which sectors we are using that and if we are using conifers or hardwoods or softwoods or hardwoods. So the main part what we are using, that goes to the sawmill industry, around about 35 million cubics. Um, sawmill industry mainly means building timber, not are we using in furniture as well and maybe some stairs made handmade by a woodworker or something but mainly uh, what goes to a sawmill that means that we will have um, products something like blue, blue lamb for example um, in the building industry so that is this area here and the difference in colors tells us which material or um, which material we are using that means in if it's conifers or um, deciduous trees and the greenish proportion here ratio um, symbolize the softwoods and we are using up to now just four percent hardwoods in the sawmill industry so the second sector here would be wood-based products. So chipboards, fiberboards, um, mainly no plywood. We do not really have plywood industry in Germany anymore. Uh, but these uh, sector, you see by the color already, the greenish one is uh, um, softwoods and the brownish one are the hardwoods. So around about 80 to 20 softwoods to hardwoods. Same thing with pulp and paper found about the same, like the um, wood-based material. And then we have here on top of uh, the draw or schematic tree here, two other, um, uh, two other points. And these are commercial energy wood and firewood for private household. And just on the sector of to burn the material, we are pretty, um, equal with using hardwoods and softwoods and all in all the other sectors and the other sectors are mainly the sectors where we make money with we use much more softwoods than hardwoods if you bring that up to everything what I used here for to introduce actually this topic we have uh, we will get more hardwoods in the future we have we will get or they grow slower much slower and we will have uh, much less softwoods than before. Together with this picture here, it's pretty clear that we are running in a lack of material when we would like to use it from the German forest. Of course, there are some other possibilities to, um, to import something, but it was a political decision to say we want to use more, or we want to uh, plant, we want to have more hardwoods in the forest um, from a uh, user's perspective, that's a huge challenge. And I will explain you on an um, example why. So I took this picture in the Harz Mountains in 2017. This stand is not even there anymore because of the bark beetle pest. But what you can see is the reason why 
People from the wooden industry love softwoods. They are straight on, they are long trunks without any kind of branches. If they are branches, they are really small and um, so easy to handle. Uh, and um, yeah, here in this case, because they all show the same age, same diameter, that is excellent from a sawmill owner's perspective. If you have a closer look to hardwood, these are beach here. We have curves uh, in many ways. We have fork-like growth. We have um, yeah, big branches. They influence the strength properties of the material. And altogether, that we come to a conclusion that to use the hardwoods is much more complicated than to use the softwoods. And that was the reason why the whole wooden industry in Germany based on softwoods. Every process is optimized for softwoods and we are struggling with really um, using hardwoods. And many people say, okay, let's just switch from softwoods to hardwoods. But that is from uh, many, in many um, cases or in many parameters really difficult. And I would like to explain you a few parameters. So why is hardwood not used? Um, first of all, there is no problems or the problems are not important enough with the availability of softwoods. As soon as we get the material softwoods, they will probably use it. And on the other side, we have an industry which is basically um, owned by um, small and medium enterprises, not always the case, but in many cases. So in this area, we have a little bit uh, problems with um, innovations. So logistic is a huge point. So if you want to build or you produce maybe a glue lamp beam or something, maybe out of birch, um, not beech, so birch. And um, birch is so much spread all over the country. You need the logistic to get all the material to your sawmill owner. You need different technical equipment um, because the density is higher, so the locks are more heavy. You are using another sawmill um, um, technology, so everything is a little bit more complicated. It is possible, of course, but it's not as easy like using softwoods. In many cases, for example, gluing, we do not have really standards on which standards do we have to use for um, introducing gluing systems um, in the building industry, so with lot bearing constructions. We have a high variability between species, much higher than in softwoods. If you can cut from a sawmill owner spruce, you are easily um, also, it's easily possible to cut um, large pine or fir. Uh, the variability between ash, beech, and oak is really it's much higher, so you have to adapt all your processes in many ways. The yield is to less. I will come to that point in a minute. The drying processes are more complicated and more expensive because it takes longer. And at the end, of course, the cost and the price is the point. And as soon as we have no customer demand, um, it is hard actually uh, to think about real products. Um, just one example here, glue lamp, that is our main uh, beam for in the building uh, sector. Um, we would start with um, the available round wood, so what is available, and that depends on the area where you live in. So you have to make sure that your sawmill, of course, is close to the area where the tree species growth, which you are interested in. Then you have to sort them, just to sort the quality sorting or the grading of the materials much more um, time consuming than it is in softwoods. Then you start to saw the timber, of course. Um, after thawing, we are doing a drying process. After drying, we're doing strength grading. Strength grading, um, of course, that you know how much load this beam um, will be able to hold. It's very, very important. It's quite a common process in softwoods. We do not have processes in hardwoods up to now. Um, we have some processes that work for one single uh, wood species, but if you are using or applying a strength grading system for beech, that doesn't matter that it works for oak or for birch. So we have to adapt a lot of um, processes in this field. Then you have to cut that in the length, and that is the easiest part of everything. 
Then we come to the point for gluing finger joints that we have in longitudinal um, uh, gluing surface and also um, the surfaces. In many cases, we do not have gluing system. They are allowed to use in lot bearing construction, at least not outside. We just do not have the gluing systems. And if we have them, they are really complicated to use. We have a pretty um, strict window for, um, for, I have my time here. <laughs> Um, we have a pretty strict window with a relative humidity and temperature, but uh, rather a few um, process halls are actually climatized. So for somebody who want to produce glue lamp of birch, um, it is just allowed on certain days over the year where temperature and relative humidity fits to the requirements of the gluing system. And that all makes it so complicated. And then we come to the point, of course, at the end, it just makes sense if you earn money with that. Um, so you have to calculate an economical feasibility study. And maybe at the end, we will have a glue lamp beam. And we did a lot of experience concerning that topic in our working group. Um, and I would like to show you shortly um, our results. And they are pretty comparable to results from other uh, departments in Germany as well. So we started a test with uh, 16 cubics of around wood. So this is now, that was our 100%. So then we cut the material, the round wood, to boards. And so they were still wet because um, the drying process is uh, will be later. And then we had um, left over 8.2, so around about 50% losses after cutting. Then we had a drying process. Um, so we had another losses during the drying process because of cracks and um, wavy boards and all this uh, stuff which is which easily happened to hardwood boards. And then we did a planing step. And then at the end we had a product and the yield was 13%. If you want to produce glue lamb, lamellas or beams um, later on and the yield is 13%, uh, no sawmill, ormal, sawmill owner will be able to survive. So then you need another, you need other products um, from all the losses what we have. Um, but in the soft woods, uh, we would use the industrial wood, the barks, the chips and so on in the um, particle board industry or fiberboard industry, but if you remember my utilization tree, you have seen that even in this area, we are using so much more softwoods that we just do not have a market for everything else besides the lamellas um, in this process here. Uh, but if the yield is so low, and again, the University of Munich, there are um, some experiments from Dresden, they all show more or less the same the yield at the end is less than 20%. And um, that is actually not enough. So, oh, I missed that circle, sorry. So, now I come to the end. So in the future, the supply of software in Germany will be lower than before. We know that, that is a political decision. We have to face that. The substitution of softwoods by hardwood is complicated and currently not yet possible for many products. We just have to face that. So we need technical improvement. We know that, but that takes a long time and a lot of money. So more hardwoods um, will have to be used. Yes, we know that, but up to now, we do not know how because the technical Technological processes are a great challenge and require close cooperation between scientists and industry. And um, we have to be better within uh, this topic than we were in the, um, in the last years. And um, we just get it together. And besides that, we also need some more cooperation with the forest sector to think about which wood species would be suitable to plant in the forest in terms of which material is useful for the wooden industry. So if we want to use wood, and actually many scientists say we have to use more wood, um, also to face the climate crisis, um, because in the building sector to use more wood makes sense um, 
compared to uh, concrete, for example, but that means also we need the material. And um, my own perspective at the end is um, we have to use less in everything. Um, and uh, otherwise, probably we will get in trouble. So thank you very much for your attention. 45 minutes. Thank you. <laughs> And again, if you have uh, any questions, we will discuss that later after the second presentations, I guess. Yeah. However, if you have something directly to this presentation or some data depicted here, we would have two or three minutes now to get into this if there has been any uncertainties or need for clar further clarification, which is not the case. In that case, thank you very much for the presentation, Mrs. Bormus. And we will now take a recess, a short one. There are toilets in this direction, um, just on the right side of the building. Also, on the very back end of there, there's a space where you can buy some coffee, if you would like to. And I will all invite you to um, meet maybe outside at five past to for a little energizer movement like Tim did it in the GA and then we will move together back inside to start at 10 past here. All right, thank you very much. <laughs>